first impressions of San Miguel? I think it's beautiful. It's super clean, it's super nice. This is our first time eating at a restaurant since early March. Globally. Yeah. This is one of the most famous churches in all of Mexico. They took our license plate. This is insane. And we have two big exciting things that we want to share with you guys. Last week, we packed up the RV for the first time in three months and hit the road again, stopping to boondock in the jungle as we make the long trek back to the United States. And today we visit the beautiful colonial city of San Miguel de Allende. This might be one of the best burritos I've ever had. For our first outing since the pandemic began. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, and almost two years ago, we traded our office jobs for a life of travel and adventure, working as digital nomads and living full time in our Winnebago RV. We were in the middle of an RV journey through Mexico when COVID-19 changed everything. They are closing the borders between the United States and Mexico. And we ended up quarantining on an island for three months. In our weekly episodes, we bring you along with us to explore local cultures, conquer fears, go off the beaten path, meet interesting people, and try local food. Through the good and sometimes bad, you're right beside us through it all. It is moving day again. We just wrapped up three nights in Puebla and we're about to hit the road. And this is one of the last new places that we're going to experience before we leave this country. We are stopping at San Miguel de Allende. We didn't get to stop on the way down because of our fast paced itinerary where we had to get to Mexico City for flights. We instead went to Guanajuato, which was amazing. Look at this church. San Miguel de Allende is supposed to have incredible architecture. There's a really famous church there. If you've seen any pictures of Mexico, you've probably seen this church. Church. A lot of Americans live there and it's about a five hour drive today. So we're packing up now yeah. and we're gonna hit the road. So this is the campground where we forgot our dog bone and they mailed it to us in Via Hermosa three and a half months ago. So I'm just doing a double, triple check of everything to make sure we haven't left anything behind this time. We sure did. Remember, blocks, two of them. This would've been bad to leave. I'm gonna have to jokingly give Howard a hard time about that. So the outdoor was his job this morning. All right, let's go give him a hard time. Hey, Howard. Hey, Howard. So I was just uh, recording something saying like, hey, we left our dog bone here last time, so I'm gonna do like a triple check of everything, make sure we didn't forget anything. the dog bone. You got the dog bone, you left the little uh, red risers. So I'm coming to give you a hard time. Did? Uh-huh. I have, oh, video, I, I have video proof. I just pulled him out. I... <laughs> 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 These red risers, these are the ones I pulled out of the bushes. So there were more? So there were more. Those three that are there were underneath the auto plumber and I put them away. These two. So you left these here? I think I left these with the dog bone. Three and a half months three ago. Three and a half months ago. Oh my God, the Still plot here. thickens. Oh my lord. It did seem like there was a lot of dirt in them when I picked them up. Yeah. Well, well still. Still. Uh, amazing. If I'd have found them, I'd have left me all that, I'd have kept them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first time eating in a restaurant since early March, and it's now the end of June. So we're on like a rooftop patio and we came up the stairs, they took our temperature. We had to fill out a form just with the date today, our names and our phone numbers. And then they gave us hand sanitizer and now we're trying to get the menu to load. It's the new normal. So the menu is a QR code because you can't have menus here. It's such a surreal experience to be like eating out. Margarita and lime dance. <laughs> Just drizzle it on. There you go. This might be one of the best burritos I've ever had. It's like shrimp, tomato, avocado, black bean, and it's hot and it's so good. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, we're gonna venture out. That was awesome. It was so good. What a great first meal at Baja Fish. 
That was delicious. Service was excellent. Yeah. They followed safety protocols to a T. Yep. It was awesome. Being this is our first restaurant experience, we didn't really know exactly what to expect, but I felt safe. Mm -hmm. Did you feel good? Absolutely, yeah. I just wash my hands a lot and use a lot of hand sanitizer. I'm sure in the United States, you guys are probably used to this now, but realize like we've been on an island for three months. But we don't like know. being reintegrated into society. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely if this is the way it is in the United States, please let us know. In the, us. Yeah, let us know in the comments below. So we just came out of the parish of St. Michael the Archangel, which is the most famous church in all of Mexico. The original church was constructed in the 1700s, the first level, but it's a work by Zeferino Gutierrez in the 19th century that is the most impressive. He constructed the spires from a postcard that he saw of a Gothic cathedral in Belgium. From inside, you can really see that Mr. Gutierrez basically took an existing church and then constructed spires on top of it. Unfortunately, there are no pictures allowed inside, but you can clearly see that the interior does not match the exterior. All right, first impressions of San Miguel? I think it's beautiful. It's super clean, it's super nice. Just like all of Mexico, there are beautiful churches. Obviously here, there are super famous churches. I can definitely see the appeal for Americans. There's a lot of what I would call American style here, like in the stores and shops. I'm impressed by the beautiful architecture and how every street you walk down, there's just kind of different colors and it's definitely not as vibrant and bright as Guanajuato, which a lot of people compared it to because Guanajuato is kind of up and coming right now as like an expat area. Mm -hmm. They're very different in my opinion. This is a lot more modernized, a lot more restaurants. We've seen like 10 rooftop restaurants and yeah, bars. Yeah, like the one behind us. Yeah, there's one right there. I think it's beautiful. I could see us coming and spending extended amounts of time here. These are just our first impressions after yeah. three hours walking around. On a rainy day. During and a pandemic. During a pandemic. <laughs> so this is the first time that we have left Scout and Piper and Ella by themselves for an extended period of time. Yeah, well, I wonder how that's gonna go. <laughs> well, we put Piper and Ella in their crate. They love their crate. They like being together, and we knew at least that they'd be safe in there. My concern is, did Scout chew on anything? <laughs> so we're gonna go back and check on all the doggies, and then we're meeting up with Dennis and Liz at a Mezcal... Mez... A Mezcal <laughs> restaurant. It's called Mezcaleria. Yeah. It's really hard for me to say. But it's a, it's a Mezcal-themed restaurant. We had mezcal on one of our first dates, so mezcal is always kind of special to us. Moment of truth. Let's see. Hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Scout. Okay, let's see. It looks like everything's intact. We are also taking our very first Uber ride in months. Oh, I think Mexico City was the last time. It was. Yeah, that was three and a half months ago. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of firsts today. <laughs> so we're walking down to meet the Uber right now and we're going to have dinner with Dennis and Liz. It's a hot day. Oh yeah. Good? Yeah. The Mez Caleria, which I can now pronounce without a problem, was hands down one of the best meals and experiences we had during our five months in Mexico. The tapas style menu has a variety of seafood and vegetarian dishes. Everything we ate was absolutely delicious and portion sizes were perfect for sharing with four people. Tuna and avocado, oh my goodness. It's a tuna power tower, Kima. Plus, the mezcal and tequila were so tasty. We even got to know the owners, Monica and Tatiana, who are very passionate about the experience they provide. One of the cool things about Mezcaleria is that they offer pulque on their menu, which is the oldest alcoholic drink in Mexico. We went back a few days later for a quick pulque lesson and of course tasting with our new friends, Monica and Tatiana. Mm. It's totally different than the one we had before. The beer, yeah. Sour beer. Sour beer, it's very drinkable. It's bubbly in the sense of that it's alive. I mean, the bacteria is actually eating the sugar water that is no longer 
being sugar. It's just getting more fermented over time. If you drink uh, young pulque in that sense, it's not so sour. It's actually sweet, and this is actually what you're getting. This is very fresh. Pulque is made by scratching the agave plant, which is the same plant as mezcal and tequila is uh, also what is used to make pulque. Okay. And so what they do is they actually scratch the plant, the agave plant, and as they scratch it, it kind of bleeds uh, out the sugary water that's inside the heart of the agave. And so they collect it and then ferment it, and that's what becomes pulque. 5,000 years ago, people used to be drinking it, and it was a connection with the gods. It was a power that you were getting, and it was something like honorable and very respectful. Only elders, only wise people in ceremonies, it was drinking. That is a species called salmania. The species salmania is the perfect species to get pulque from. These are wild agaves, so you actually get it from where they belong. And we had pulque before in Guanajuato City. Can't decide if I like it or not. I either like love it or hate it. And it was so different. This was like, how would you say, like effervescent uh, and definitely thinner, not as milky as the um, pulque that we had. So. And we just learned that that's because every farm, every plant, and even the technique of scraping it is completely different, which produces a different flavored pulque or a different consistency pulque. They took our license plate. Always an adventure. Uh, we don't know how much it is, which is kind of weird that a ticket doesn't contain actually how much it is. Um, but it's gonna be paid seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Can we walk there? Yeah, it's in the, I think it's the main square. It says in the main square, so. Hi, Karumba. Kaylin, what happened? We can't get our plate today. Why? I don't really know. We don't know. <laughs> she says, we have to come back tomorrow. So I said, well, we need our plate to drive. And she said, just show the ticket if we get pulled over. I think the plate is not here yet. So they take the plates off, right, to make sure you pay for it. But I guess it takes 24 hours or whatever for the plate to actually get to the office. It must be in some cop's car right now, which is also kind of crazy. Um, so the, the fine, though, is 348 pesos. Uh, so technically, we are both over in Price is Right rules, but I was closest. They better give you your plate back, like when you pay. Stay and tuned. Instead of it being like mailed to you, because it's mailed to you. We're screwed. Yeah. In 48 hours, we're gonna be back in the United States. Can you believe it? No, I can't. We've been in Mexico for five months. So the idea that we're gonna be in Texas in two days is just wild and honestly bittersweet. I have loved my time, I know you have too, here in Mexico. <laughs> I mean, look at these views. This is at the Hotel San Ramon RV Park, and we've got cactus, mountains, you can see the city down there. It's just beautiful everywhere we've gone. Yeah, San Miguel has been really special, and we really can't wait to come back here. Before we head out for our last day of exploring, we have two big exciting things that we want to share with you guys. First of all, we're launching our own Patreon page. And before you stop watching, because we just said that, it is unlike anything else we have found in the RVing community on Patreon. The second piece of news is on our Patreon page, so you'll have to go to the page anyway to find out that important piece of news. But it's worth it. <laughs> we promise. All right, let's go explore. So we came back downtown to try to pay our ticket and get our license plate again. And the funny thing is, we can't find parking. We've been driving around for like 20 minutes now. That same spot we were parked in was open, but we were not chancing it again. After an additional five to 10 minutes, we found a spot outside of the city center. So we'll get our steps in. Good job. Hopefully we won't get a ticket this time. We're in a well, legit spot. I mean, they, they can't take our license plate. What are they gonna plate? do, take a plate again? <laughs> you can only take a plate once. Oh, <laughs> Just had to give her my name. I gave her my driver's license because it was easier and paid the fine. With using a credit card, there was a small fee, so it was 353 pesos, which is like $15. And then I had to go to another window, and sure enough, they have an entire like filing cabinet system, and they're filled with like dozens and dozens of license plates. I had to sign for it, and then she gave it back. With our time in San Miguel de Allende coming to an end, we splurged on one last night out, complete with delicious sushi and dessert and drinks at one of the swankiest spots in the city, Quince. 
This is insane. I can't even stop my face from smiling. Like, I'm trying to make it not smile, but... What? This rooftop bar and restaurant gives you, hands down, some of the best views in town. Oh my god. What is that? Uh, this is a Mezcal Revival. Next week, our Mexican adventures come to an end. We're going to be back in the United States in 24 hours. As we cross the border back into the U.S. This is Scouts going to America Post. Good driving. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications when we post our weekly videos. Thanks for watching.